All right. Welcome back. It's week nine. We are here with Zonies. Howdy. Uh, KWS isn't here this week, or at least not at the moment. Maybe later, probably not. But last week's challenge was a collaborative challenge. We had one person doing supports for a ride and the other person doing the track. And in neither... that order. Uh, yeah, in, in that order, of <laughs> course, yeah. <laughs> Um, but I guess we should just get into it. That's pretty much simple. So this first one is from Hazy, and they partnered with their mom, actually. They said, thought I'd take the partner idea and make it a chance to have some mother-child bonding time. That's very sweet. Uh, uh, made also Tesseract is a nod to Anubis, favorite Gersar coaster. Cool, cool. Even though they're not much competition, do you get a headache? That's a win. Ask the question. What could they add now? The coasters are testing the boundaries of the human body. The outer bank nano rolls something I had in mind from first attempt at making this coaster back when it was going to be an extreme spinner. The launch is punchy and intense to further connect this coaster to Anubis. Said working with my mom, we made the support. She isn't a big coaster person or gamer, but enjoyed her some time. That's the goal. Cool, cool. Uh, went for something somewhat basic. Did have her cheat a little by using prefabs and working off of those. Hey, that's fine. Even the pros use prefabs and edit them. Yeah. I do all the time. Most of the time, help came in for spacing and showing her which prefabs she need. Enjoy Tesseract. Well, thank you. Let's get into it here. Let's make that a little bit. Ooh, very punchy launch. Yeah, that's Anubis, all right. Yeah. I like the plain black environment. Whoa. Very spicy outer bank banana roll. Yeah. Ooh, I like the spine support there. <laughs> I'm just imagining you explaining to your mom having to place track connectors and then <laughs> run beams through it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like yeah, you just you just place it on the spine. And then I edit it, and they'd be like, what's the spine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To explain all this terminology. <laughs> yeah, there's so much, really. They didn't do a bad job, though. It looks pretty consistent for the most part. I bet mom regrets taking an interest in her, so in her child's hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> nah. No, That's really cool no. that the, this collaborative effort was done that medium yeah that's definitely an interesting take on this one that i would not have expected at least yeah but supports are like pretty good it's a little light on this inverted banana but pretty much everything else is like not too bad even gerslauer has like some far spans like that so i would say that even works pretty good very interesting take the punchy launch is definitely a a just pilled <laughs> And the layout's very interesting too. I like the I like the new element as well. Let's get a little more of this here. Awesome. Let's just get to the next one here. So the next two actually we had uh, it was supposed to be Gar Carter, uh, Grand Crackers and Carter were working together to make something called what Hyperia should have been, but uh, the download link uh, was submitted incorrectly. It's just a YouTube link, which links to like the last week's challenge, so I'm not sure what the actual thing was, and I was not able to download this. Uh, if one of you, though, wants to post a video of your submission like on your channel or something, you know, like all of the previous weeks where we've had submissions that didn't work. If you post a video on your channel and leave a comment so that people can see it and still get to see what you wanted to make. Uh, and then we had another person who uh, partnered with their family, actually. Someone named Zaza was partnering with their sister, uh, but they also did not submit the download link correctly and just, which is very sweet, but I can't see it. I searched the Steam Workshop in NLC, so I, and I didn't see anything similar, so I was not able to download those two. 
So again, post a video to your channel if you can leave a comment so people can still see it. But I'm not able to show them in this because I don't have the files. Yeah, double and triple check your files. Yes, please triple check the files, triple check the uh, instructions so that you don't submit like a Google Drive link that's locked or anything like that, because that's also happened. All right, but this next one though that we do have is from TB and Volkip. It looks like TB did the supports and Volkip did the track. This is Valkyrie. Oh, it's a D6. Said shout out, shout out to Volkip for giving me a great canvas to work with. Did an amazing job for the first full layout. Scenery is a mix of 3D modeling and custom support work. This is a lot of scenery. This looks pretty good. And is it, it a is, D6 or a D7? It is a D6. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's get in the front row, actually. Honestly, I think the D6s are better than the D7s as well. Anyways. Oh, have you written Dr. Diabolical? I haven't, so I guess I can't really say anything. Hopefully <laughs> I'll get on uh, <laughs> uh, Iron Menace this year, though. I like the rock pit that's going into. Yeah, it does look pretty nice. Ooh, I see a spicy overbank there. Yeah. Ooh! Wait, that whole ending sequence is kind of hype. Oh, wow. Uh, nice Ooh. wiggly and twisty and then a roll. Very cool. That was cool. The low to ground section on a dive is like not something you usually see. Yeah, I like seeing non-standard stuff when it comes to like rides that have a tendency to end up being standard it's nice to see a non-standard version it is being made the clearance here looks really tight but if it works it works oh yeah i think your real <laughs> bogeys might uh, strike that uh yeah that probably doesn't pass but that's fine it's yeah, fine that's fine that's it. fine you have the like super low to the ground like things i like the super like the low overbank and this flat turn here under the drop is well it's really cool I like the non-standard layouts, but this is also, like, not offensively non-standard, too. Yeah. So, like, this is still, like, practical. The only thing that I think would have made this, like, super cool is if this was a splash down here instead of a just a little straight section. Oh, uh, yeah. And then getting into the break would be, like, I don't know if it would have the speed because the D6s slow down so much. But that's also, like, that's not even nitpicking, that's just a suggestion. <laughs> Yeah, very cool. I feel like dives are an underappreciated style in the first place. Do you feel like that initial drop crest is a little too large? Eh, that's a, a dive or a B and M dive specifically. That's a very difficult thing to master. Mm -hmm. Speaking from experience, that is. I, I don't know why, but that's like one of the most like finicky and difficult to reproduce things. Yeah, that like overbank is so cool. And the roll over the path too, that's a cool path interaction. Super cool. Let's see the next one. And the supports are also, you know, typical B&M, can't really ask for better. Alright, this is Imperia from LSM Trail and Majestic At, where LSM Trail did the track. They say, first laying launch in the world. Ooh. Made with his brother. Very cool. Or made with their brother. They say, noticed Vacoma flying coasters are not made for laying sections IRL. True, but it's called No Limits for a reason, so you're fine. Said only one train could be added because of the single station and then a bunch of stats. But this is like very deeply themed. I see custom track there with a material as well. Ooh, this is like nice and shiny. 
Damn, this is a lot for like such a small time frame. Oh, with the sideways loading. Ah, uh, KDB, KWS would love to see this using his trains. So we got the first launch as a flying launch. Pause for effect. Yeah, this is so, like, flushed out. Oh, that's a fun element. Oh, here's the lay down. Got that blood rush. <laughs> <laughs> and then back to flying. That's an elegant transition there. This really is like Scandinavian fly. Yeah. And then a curved little hop into the brake run. That's fun. And then spins back. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. Wow. The lay down launch is like super cool. And the transition back out of it is like super clean. I like how it just kind of like disappears off into the woods here for a second. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Uh, yeah. Notice some tight clearances, but you know, that's fine. There's so much going on. This is like cool. Yeah. And you put materials on all this too, which is a lot. Of oh, you use that as a support. That's fun. <laughs> that's so fun. Is the other side. Oh, the other side is too. That's so hype. I actually like that a lot supports person getting creative with it yeah see that's what i was like hoping to get out of this was some like ridiculous fun supports yeah this is so cool this is awesome to see let's see the next one here all right this is starlight by coaster jappy and phoenix daniel they say Coaster Jappy did the scenery. The story goes you're on a preview evening of Starlight and you get to ride it at its very first. Something tells me this is going to be like Starfall Racers vibes. Yeah. Or Starlight from. Oh, oh I see. It's Amazon a on TV show, The Boys. <laughs> <laughs> I would know. I haven't seen it. You get the preview entrance by going back here. Is this an old week submission? Oh, there's no, that's just a raptor. It's just a random raptor. Raptor to the out. Regular standard layout. Definitely getting Starfall Racers vibes still. Big RMC in the back there. Alright, where's the station? <laughs> Teaser for next time. That's hmm. fun. Gotta walk up the stairs. These supports are looking pretty good too. Ooh, yeah, I nice like piece the... of the piping. Yeah, that's really cool. Gift shop. Oh, I can't tell. Where's he go? Wait, where's the exit? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Outstanding. All right, let's get in the front row here. Rocks Ooh. and the moon. Those are good-looking asteroid objects. The 
custom LSM sound, that's fun. Supports are looking good. twist. Is this the Bulgarian twice twisting velocity knot? <laughs> is that what they call the element on uh, Ride to Happiness? <laughs> that is an ancient No Limits meme. Oh. Uh. But it also like kind of is validly because the person who like actually I don't know if they were the one that created it but someone who is like actively involved with the meme is like the designer at Mac now. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Very cool. I like that like sort of low to ground section at the end. Yeah. And Coaster Jappy did the I like the, I like the asteroids in the little pre launch area. Yeah. Just because I was starting to read expanse. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh, space is cool. Yeah, this is a nice, like, way to do this room with lights and. This moon object is cool then, too. Yeah. It's in two phases at once, though. That's fine. Oh, with the splashdown. Oh. I didn't even realize I didn't even that noticed was a splashdown. The splashdown. This is a good sequence here with the like flat turn roll switch over and then another flat turn. That's just a yeah. generally fun sequence. And these like pillars and stuff are cool too. Interesting support here. Mm. Very cool. Awesome. Let's see the next one. All right, this one is Ares Gauntlet by One Zenith, who did the supports, and Matrix Coasters, who did the track. They say Mac Giga with a layout by Matrix Coasters and scenery and supports by One Zenith, themed to Ares, the Greek god. Oh, that's a Giga Coaster, all right. Wow. Oh yeah, that's a big boy. I guess Ares is the Greek one because it's Mars is the Roman one. Yeah. I don't know. I was thinking twice about that. Ooh. Oh, this is interesting. Ooh, very long stall under the drop. <laughs> I know somebody that would hate that. Well, they can get good. Rotten know. hell. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not me. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna Ooh. watch this. Wow, that, that, that was like a, a lot of rolling. Over, yeah, it's fun. Huge hill. The like lift structure with that is like almost steel curtain vibes. Yeah. Although I guess it's more Hyperia based. Some. Weirdly wide stance supports down the low tracks. Ooh. Roll up into the mid course. Yeah. And then the steep drop off, that's very Mac. That's a nice little like double airtime section. Nice big. The hang -time ninety-five loop. foot tall vertical loop. Uh Ah, it's just a time traveler and it's not. <laughs> yeah, I got a little, uh. dueling interaction. Oh, 
Oh, and it comes back and does it again. Wow. That's cool. And into the brakes. Yeah, this is gigantic. And I'm... What is this? Also interesting. But also not operating. Damn. The supports on this are really cool, though. I suppose yeah. it is probably more Hyperia adjacent. But how many rolls was this first element? One, and then a second full roll. So this is like a... What is this, a 900 roll? So it looks like it's three inversions on that element. It's a full 720 plus another 180. Quick maths. So yeah, nine... 900. That's 360. That's 720. Yeah. That'd be a pretty it, insane feeling. Oh yeah, no, it would be insane. But if you got the height, then I guess you kind of have to do it. Yeah. And of all the manufacturers who would actually do it, Mac is the one. support at the top of the loop here. Hmm. I do like this like spine under the mid-course, that's kind of cool. So then loop airtime hill, another low roll. And over, double up into the brakes. Super long double station. But it works. Very cool. And it just dwarfs the Ferris wheel. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Awesome. Yeah, like the sports, like the track. Very cool. Let's see the next one. I think we are in for a meme. Oh, I'm scared. This is uh, Dark Star and Element 115 with Bepis the Ride RCT3 Hybrid Coaster. Oh, this is in reference to the, the Mountain Dew Coaster. <laughs> or like just the soda coasters in Roller Coaster oh, Tycoon yeah, 3. Yeah, it probably is, isn't it? Yeah. So would recommend Those soda some, coasters are cool as hell. They say would recommend blasting some 2000s techno and hard style while watching the POV, and we highly encourage a little bit of ride area exploration. Bringing back the RCT3 classics with this one. <laughs> I'm so... Because I, I haven't seen those videos in years. Not the cold stuff. I actually, I actually watched uh, the Mountain Dew coaster pretty recently. That is... Yeah, they do the thing where they just stack various coaster tracks on them to oh look my like. Gosh. Um... Who did the wood on this? So Dark Star did the supports and Element One One Five did the layout. Okay. What is this track? Oh, it's like it's every just track. A mash. I mean, that's okay. exactly what they did in Roller Coaster Tycoon Three. Uh, I guess so. <laughs> it's an arrow. <laughs> it's arrow trains. I'm gonna take a look around as we here go first. through. These, oh wait! Oh my! Gosh, I just realized so it's going on. Probably gonna take those elements and bank exactly like it does in RCT3. I'm not sure. I'm very I interested to see how this is gonna go. Oh, those are decorative back there. Oh, that's fun. I just don't, like those like sconces with the track coming out. Those are decorative, and they come from that uh, that one roundup coaster. I forget what it's called. Oh yeah. Black Knight, I think. Oh, they're decorative. They're not part of the ride. They look decorative. I don't oh, know. Maybe they might very, be around. Right. This is very art. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Very RC3 yep. and forces will uh, not be good for you, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to add the hard style yourself. I don't. I'm not going to risk the copyright claim. <laughs> nah. <I'm> just... <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you can't be too hard with it or they're going to pick something up. Yeah. Second launch. Uh, what is this track? It's like B and M, RMC, and Arrow, all at the same yeah. time. 
<laughs> Very oh. extended version of the. Ah. Uh. I would have yeah, to say that was that is a very that was, faithful. Uh, yeah, that was a roller coaster check and three soda coaster. Yeah, if you haven't seen those before, I would highly recommend looking them up to see what exactly this is supposed to be. I, I gotta explore this area some more. We got the tunnel rings, the 4D supports. That's crazy. Yeah. These are the black site scenery pieces. Yeah. I think that was. Oh, you know, that's funny because that was a um. That was that coaster came out of a the three blind mice. Oh yeah, that was three blind mice. Yeah. yeah. And this is like, not really three blind mice, but. The two so yeah, I mice. yeah. I called it Roundup, but yeah, no, it was a three blind mice. Yeah, I forgot about that. So that's a that's a funny reference. Got this. I think Black Sight was my personal favorite of that one. I don't even remember all the rides that were submitted for that. There's so much going on. Subway Johnny Rockets. Johnny Rockets. This is Potato Factory. <laughs> what is this, Emerald Park? Oh, it's the old Johnny Rockets logo. Okay. <laughs> I have an empty Pepsi can sitting in front of me right now. Not quite Beppas, but... I see. <laughs> yeah, Pepsi is better. Or Beppas is better than Kong. I see. I'm I'm a sprite person myself. These are the same ones, aren't they? Panda yeah. Express. Ben and Jerry's. Chick Fil A. Good. You know thing. the problem is all those fast food establishments that they're placing in there. Um, those ones don't have Pepsi products. I think they all have Coke products. What a shame. Yeah. Good thing we're recording this on a, a Wednesday night, though. Yeah. This Chick Fil A's open. You gotta put in a Taco Bell. You gotta put in a KFC. You gotta put in a Freddy's. You, did the you gotta go back in time and put Bell. in Culver's oh, back to Freddy's like a couple years crazy. ago when Culver's had Pepsi. <laughs> All right, this one was cool. I was so mad Culver's got rid of Pepsi. Damn, did they? I don't care. I always get their milkshakes anyways. Yeah. Oh, and this, this is a, this a giant it. can too. I didn't even realize the giant cans were part of it. That's hilarious. Let's take a look at the next one. Yeah. All right. This is Cat of the Potatoes doing supports and Furball Twenty Six doing the track. This is Little Fox. Say. Advertisements introducing Little Fox, the all new for 2024, beautifully landscaped Gerslar family coaster features two lift hills, twisty turny fun for all ages. Experience the thrill of weaving through a lush garden. Four legs, only at Potato World. Is that the name of this park now? <laughs> That's pretty I guess funny. So. Must be 44 inches tall to ride, 48 inches to ride alone. Decent rideability there. And it's Cat of the Potatoes, says one want to place the nodes and everything for the track. It was entirely following my sister's instruction under strict supervision. It's her layout, not mine. So I'm guessing that's who Furball 26 is. So more family stuff, wow. I was not expecting that at all. She <laughs> would have loved for her to do it herself if she has no interest in learning anything not certain related about the NL2 editor. Which is funny, because like, scenery is like arguably the hardest part of the No Limits editor. Just, I, don't remember, I don't remember where, but I know I've seen supports like this on a Gerslar before. I mean, these look like pretty basic Gerslar supports. Oh, these are interesting. Uh, I see what you mean. I have no idea, but I'm sure I believe you. No on red audio this time, just general area music. I hear that summer air. Yeah. Oh, you said there was an Easter egg from last week? Okay, let's do this one and then we'll get back to that. Ooh, it's ADA accessible with the elevator. 
They always put so much attention to detail into their parks. There we go, we got two lifts here. So it's a little Gerslar family. I don't remember what that one is called, but I think it was in France somewhere that this like is giving me the vibes of. Mm. I don't remember what it's called. I think it was a single car one though, so it probably isn't exactly this. I guess as far as like US inspirations, I can see a little bit of like Fire Chaser Express. Although I guess if it was your sister doing it, then uh, it probably isn't anything at all. <laughs> yeah. You're probably yelling at your sister, no, we can't have inversions on this family coaster. <laughs> That's probably so real. Very cool. Uh, with the peat pack coming out. Yeah, this is a nice like little layout. It's like surprisingly compact and practical and I honestly like it quite a lot. I think it works really well for a family layout. This break run's a little like forced, but everything else is like super concise. And it fits in the park well. Okay, so he said there's an Easter egg from last week. He said it's on a hill near Jetstream. Which one was Jetstream? Yeah. That was... That was this one, right? I think so. There's no oh, there's a hill on the left. There's a hill on the left? Oh, there's it's a over hill here. <laughs> Alright, I wouldn't have seen that anyway. <laughs> That's pretty funny, though. Yeah, and this is, like, central in the park, too. You're really, like, building this out into a whole park. Mm -hmm. I guess next week you probably, like, connect back around here or something? Put something in here? Well, I guess it depends on whatever your, uh... Yeah, that's true. It does depend on what the prompt is. Very cool, though. Yeah, I'm... I like this one a lot, actually. Very cool to see. Let's see the next one. Alright, this is Zampano with the tracks. That's a name I haven't seen in a while. And Curly with the supports. I'm doing Blazing Meteor here. This is Curly I know the pain of Oh my god, yeah, it's a premiere. Ooh! Whoa! Ooh. Gotta have it. It's not a premierized roller coaster without a horrible valley risk. True, and that's a good looking <laughs> gradient there on the. Yeah. Top hat, too. Oh, and this turns into, like, a spaghetti bowl. Oh, they really did all that on the supports. Oh, I saw those support connectors. Nah, I mean, we gotta we gotta check those over... Nope, they didn't do it totally with the overbank supports. It's not but, pretty fast, like, though. They still <laughs> yeah. did it really good, yeah. It's just, man, the, having to angle these stupid square tube... Ugh, too much. Oh, yeah, no thanks. The mid course, true premiere. Yeah. Ooh, track, yeah. <laughs> oh, a second launch. Ooh, another launch. Into a 95 foot tall vertical loop. <laughs> <laughs> and then corks for strain to the brakes. That was a really fun layout. Yeah, I said curly supports plants and rocks, car textures, and Zampano did the track terrain, immediate area theming, and 3D modeling. Yeah, what if Parks big... bought premieres as much as Parks bought B&Ms in the 90s? Oh my gosh, that would be crazy. Oh, the gradient on the trains is cool too. Actually, yeah. I gotta see these car textures. Blazing Meteor. I like that font. I think supports are like, damn. I got this this iconic yeah, connector. Yeah, that, that so. is really good detail there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and the cover roll goes around the mid, mid course. That's cool. Yeah. And I honestly like this little straight section here. Yeah. I think that's a very premiere. It's a nice quirk. It feels like um. 
I guess it's SNS now, but like Powder Keg that used to be the premier water coaster. Yeah. That like has that little section that goes down. Oh, and the other shrink gradient's different. That's cool. Well, let's go to look at the overbank supports. Which one? This one? The over, like, yeah, the big tall one. Okay, yeah, they did not quite do the, the square connector I... where it, like, goes square for a second before it turns into the 90 degree, like, stuff that was, like, uh, 90 yeah. degree or greater. I can't blame you, though. I like this yeah. support. Oh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, crazy amount of work on these supports. Nice paths. We got a condor. I'm only trying to nitpick, flaw nitpick flaws because I'm jealous of everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Real. And the background here actually looks like pretty comparable too. And a custom skybox, I think. I like the trench. And through the loop. This like first like dive down here is really cool. Yeah. And the gradients are always fun. Very cool. Yeah, this is a super cool one. Awesome. Let's take a look at the next one here. Alright, this is by... This is the track from Jackson Grace and supports by Swiss Coaster Enthusiasts. This is PPPPP The Ride. In the comments, just PPPPPPPPPP. <laughs> That is a very bright orange. That's not orange, that's pink. It's a very bright pink. What are the supports? What's going on here? That's <laughs> not one. A sideways wind turbine <laughs> that's like in the ground. Is the whole thing supposed to be like suspended by the wind turbines? Or turbine, I guess. Oh, there's a single support. I, right I see the, the one support. Yeah. Very fun. Do you like the layout? There's a. That's, a, that's almost a GCI moment there. <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah, the layout's very interesting. And different, I think that's cool. I'm very confused by the, uh, single support here. Yeah. <laughs> and the colors and whatever this car texture is. <laughs> I'm not even gonna ask. Definitely an interesting submission. And this, like, wind turbine here. That's, like... underground and very pink well I hope all parties were in on the joke <laughs> <laughs> hopefully this isn't an unfinished version I hope this is the the final one uh, it's on Nolan's exchange so probably maybe it's just a really good joke if so it's pretty funny but very pink Awesome. And I guess because everybody was doubling up this week, that's about it. There were only 11 entries and two of them, again, we couldn't get to work. So do check the comments to see if you can find those final two to see if they posted anything. But I guess all there is to do now is to go over the winners for last week, which last week's prompt was the uh well this was last week's prompt but the uh the previous week's prompt 
was to build a Mobius dueling coaster, which is a dueling coaster that only has one continuous track for the whole uh, cycle. But our top three for the overall best in third was Secret Imbecile with Dual Cotty, which was super cool. I think that one was probably my favorite. Uh, but then for first and second was actually a two-way tie with ML Design's Mobius Dick, which had that super cool, like, double rollover thing that was really cool. And then Matrix Coaster's Serpent Kiss, which was the uh, Dueling 4D. That one was so cool. And then for best use of template, uh, second and third here was a tie with ML Designs again and TB's Singularity. And then first place for best use of template was Matrix Coaster's Serpent's Kiss. So Matrix Coaster's technically got first on both, but it, huh. it was a tie for the first one. So it wasn't, a, it wasn't a clean sweep, but almost. That one was so cool. I think that's super well-deserved, though. Well, congratulations again to those winners. Uh, do let me know in the comments what you thought about the collaborative prompt week. I'm not sure what to think of it so far. We had less entries and didn't see some of the regulars, but we did seem to get some cool new interactions. So let me know what you thought, both as a participant and somebody maybe who didn't participate because of it, uh, because I do have a couple of other similar collaborative prompts that could be fun to do if everyone enjoyed it. Uh, but without further ado for that, let's get into this week's prompt. Now I've heard that the template focused prompts are a little bit overdue. So for this week, we've got a template back again. This week's prompt is called Across the River, not through the woods, not yet at least. Uh, but if I open up the park here, you can see that we've got this river running through the middle of the template with 50 foot cliffs on each side. And then in the middle of the, the template here, we have a bridge. Now this river is 100 feet wide and uh, this bridge is 50 feet tall and your prompt for today is to build a coaster which crosses the river by interacting with this bridge in some way. Now I'm going to disallow modifying the terrain on this one and I'm also going to disallow putting footers in the water. So no footers in the water, no modifying terrain. Uh, you can cross the river any way that you want, but for one of these thing ways that you cross, if you cross multiple times, if you don't, uh, at least one of the ways that it crosses has to interact with this bridge in some way. Now, I'm also going to disallow modifying the bridge in any ways. So the bridge is made out of supports, it's a coaster. Um, don't unfreeze the coaster and modify it, but if you want to add your own supports to interact with the bridge anyway, you can, you know, add additional supports to the bridge or anything like that, then that's totally okay and encouraged. You can go over the bridge, you can go under the bridge, you can go around the bridge, as long as you don't have any footers in the water, and you don't modify the terrain, and you don't modify the bridge itself, Anything goes. Any coaster style, any type, uh, any scenery, anything else, all good to go. Just no footers in the water, no modifying the bridge or the terrain. Now this past week, I had moved the deadline for entries up from Thursday to Wednesday, and having that extra time to edit the video really did help me get this out on time for this week. So even though this is going to be back to a one-week prompt, I think I am still going to move the deadline up to Wednesday. So entries for this week's contest are going to be due on Wednesday, April 10th. And then the next video is going to be on Friday, hopefully. So this is technically going to be the shortest contest yet. But again, let me know in the comments how you feel about that, how you feel about the collaborative prompts, um, how you feel about anything in general, regarding the contest at least. Now, I'm also going to put a small change to the submission forms. Um, so far I haven't 
required an email to uh, make the to submit the, an entry, but with this past week having two coasters that weren't submitted properly that I couldn't get to view, um, I want to try and minimize that to happen. So I'm going to start requiring an email on the submission form, just so that when I go to sit down and do the recording, if there's an issue with it and I can't download it for whatever reason, I have a way to contact you so that you can potentially get me a park before I finish the video up and maybe go back and actually record it and put it in the video. But I think that about wraps it up there this week. It was a short week since uh, people were doubling up and some people didn't submit with the collaboration anyways. But we are back on a normal schedule now. So I think that's about it. I will see you next week.